I thought Michael was unbelievably, uh, and he became my mentor, of course, because he, it was he who finally got me up there in the first place to Did do he Henry direct the your Henry V. He said he wanted a Canadian to come up and head the company, and he'd come down to see my Mar Mark Anthony. I was playing at the American Shakespeare Festival, and uh, he liked it, and he said, "Come on, come on up." Um, so I went up to do that. That was very exciting. I, I, I'd also done The Lark in, on Broadway with Julie Harris, so I'd had a, you know, I'd had a, uh -huh. a, a good grounding in. I was Henry the Fifth had the, the Quebec actors and the. Well, English that was what was so wonderful about hit, that pr production because I think more than any more than any production perhaps since, in a sense, up there, uh, it had the French actors as playing the French court from Quebec, the Théâtre du Nouveau Monde. They'd come up, he had asked them to come up and do their Molière at the Avon Theatre, a season of their Molière, about three or four weeks, and also to play the French court in Henry V on their nights off. And so we had the likes of Jean Gascon playing the Constable of France and Jean-Louis Roux and Gratien Gélina, you know, playing the King of France. And, and what a production that was. Not only was it a huge diplomatic move in this country, but it was also such a theatrical coup. And that's Michael, that mild-mannered, well, kind of introverted man who suddenly brought all that color onto the stage. And, um, and a lasting color, it wasn't just fleeting. And how was he as a director? Oh, I loved it, Michael. Uh, as a director, he was sometimes a little precise, uh, perhaps sacrificing uh, a certain passions. Uh, but Precise the, meaning, well, Christopher, I think it better if you sat down at the end of the line? Or? No, no, no. Uh, no, just don't let your passion totally go away with you because you've got more to come later. Uh, he, <coughs> he, reason was his, uh, his sort of doorway to clarity. Uh, he, he, when we talk about clarity, Michael's clarity was absolutely riveting. He also taught me, taught me how to throw away a famous line, not linger on it. You know, and there are a lot of famous lines in Shakespeare. Right. When you come to it, try to be original about it and try to make it sound as if it's the first time it's been said. And, and you won't do that by pausing before and saying, Wait for it, baby. It's just coming around the corner now. There it is. Just skate through it and, and surprise them with it. And let them react later to uh, the familiarity of it. And don't give them time to dwell on it. It's just part of, a part of um, the orchestration. He was terrific. Uh, he was a classicist. A, a true one. Uh, some did, he, did he determine all the production before he moved into rehearsal? Yes, I think. <clears throat> yes, I, I do think he did, and that's one. That is this my only, my only little, tiny bit of criticism that I may have for him. He had planned it all beforehand. He knew exactly where that. Not, not by putting little dots where we were supposed to move. I mean that was up to us. Because after all, he did have companies of experienced actors who, who knew where to place themselves. But he had organized the whole thing in front, intellectually and emotionally. He knew where all the effects were going to be before he started rehearsal. And that's the only time I felt that he might sometimes have sat. He was f fine with fresh new ideas, or d ideas that departed from his own. Uh, he was very generous about that. But I think sometimes his own instincts were checked a little by his own self-discipline. And it would only hurt him, perhaps, not anybody else. 